Hello dear, welcome to English Needs. Here is a line by line explanation of the sonnet 60 written by William Shakespeare. The main theme of this sonnet is that time is a ruthless destroyer. It can turn most beautiful faces into most ugly faces. This is the power that time has. Time destroys everything. Shakespeare hopes that his sonnets written on the worth of his intimate friend the fair youth would not be destroyed. Time, the greatest destroyer, would spare his sonnets. Like as the waves make towards the pebbled shore, small round shaped stones are called pebbles. This is a pebbled shore. So do our minutes hasten to their end. The waves moving towards the shore die down as they reach the shore. In the same way, every minute of our life dies down as the time passes. Each changing place with that which goes before it. In sequent toil, all forwards do contend. It means every wave takes the position of the wave which came before it, which died down. In the same way, every minute of our life dies down, one after another. In sequent means sequentially, that is one after another. Toil means work very hard. Shakespeare has used this word because the waves move on pebbled shore. It is a rough surface and the waves struggle to move. Waves are for comparison. Waves are compared to the minutes of our life. Nativity once in the main of light crawls to maturity wherewith being crowned. Nativity here is the birth of a person. Main of light means comes to light. It means appears. Crawls means moving very slowly. Maturity here means youth. A child after being born slowly attains adulthood. Wherewith being crowned. Being crowned here means endowed with all good things, all beautiful things, nice things. When we are young, we are full of spirit. Good looking, rather beautiful, active. Nature provides us all good things when we are young. Therefore, Shakespeare uses the word crowned. Nativity once in the main light can be compared to the birth of sun every morning. And as the time passes, at the noon time, the sun shines the brightest. In the same way, youth of a person is the brightest time of one's life. Crooked eclipses against his glory fight. Eclipse means covering of a heavenly body with another body temporarily. It's called Grahana in Kannada. The unwanted elements like aging, sickness, weakness, all these factors fight against the youth and make a person grow old. We know that old age is a curse, and time that gave doth now his gift confound. It means whatever the good things, nice things, beauty, these all the things which the nature gave us at the time. Time is personified here. The time gave us all good things to us, but now it has taken it back. It has snatched these good things from us and it is making us grow old. Time doth transfix the flourish set on youth. Doth transfix means transfixes. It means time stops or ceases. The flourish set on youth. Beauty, strength, agility. These virtues are given in abundance. That's what we call it as flourishing. Set on youth means given while one is young.
The poet says that this all of virtues are now stopped. Mr. Time has mercilessly stopped all these virtues and delves the parallels in beauty's brow. Delve means to dig. Parallels. Here you can see these, the wrinkles on the forehead. As these lines are parallel to one another, he calls them as parallels. Feeds on the rarities of nature's truth. Feeds on means to eat up, to devour. Rarities are those good virtues like beauty. These virtues are the gifts of the nature. And these things which are already given are eaten up by Mr. Time, the destroyer. and nothing stands but for his scythe to mow. Here is an imagery of time as a powerful person who destroys everything using his scythe. So, time is that destroyer who destroys the glory of a person's youth and make her an ugly old woman or ugly old man. And yet, to times in hope, my words shall stand praising thy worth despite his cruel hand. These two lines are called concluding couplets of the sonnet. Shakespeare had a very intimate friend called Fair Youth. He has written many sonnets on the beauty of the Fair Youth, about the intimacy they had, about the deep love what he had for the Fair Youth. The poet wishes that his verses would be immortalized. People would read those sonnets and would know the worth of the fair youth. No doubt, time is a ruthless destroyer. Everything is destroyed by the time. But he hopes that his verses would remain intact. They would not be destroyed by time. He hopes that time would not touch these verses, it would not destroy them as it destroys everything. For explanation in Kannada, touch here. If you feel that a video is useful, please like it.